Hey guys, what's up? I'm Slim and you're watching Slimothy TV. In this video, I have a super special one for you guys. This is going to be a full review of the ambient weather station WS2000. This is a solar powered wireless weather station that you can set up at your home. And I wanna give a big thank you and shout out to Ambient for sending this out free for review. I am going to be going through this entire user manual. I'm gonna set this thing up and I'm gonna show you guys what this thing is all about. And then we are going to dive into the different apps and the interface that you can use on a daily basis to check your weather incredibly accurately at your location. So we are going to have to uh, install this obviously at a different location than our studio uh, because we need a good spot to be able to gather weather data. Real quick in this video, I wanted to show you some of the coolest things that we unboxed. The package was pretty big, so we couldn't you know, put it all in the studio here, but I took some bits and pieces that I think you guys will be really excited about. So this is the main unit right here. And this has the rain gauge. It's gonna have the wind vane to get the wind direction and the speed. We also have the indoor sensor here, which you guys can place somewhere in your house uh, if you get one of these and you can monitor the indoor and outdoor weather. And then here you have the screen and this is the display that's going to have all of your information. It looks really cool. From what I've seen on Ambient's website, this thing looks very, very sophisticated and powerful. So I am super excited to go ahead and start using this, start testing it, putting it through its paces and see just how good this screen can be and the information it can provide. So I think the way that I'm going to mount this is they sent kind of a tripod mount, but it's obviously a very heavy duty and meant for being outdoors and then a pole to stick in the middle of it so it can be a little bit lifted off the ground. For demonstration purposes, I will be putting it probably on a deck, but realistically you wanna get this as high and as far away from other buildings as you can. If you have a mobile phone or even a desktop computer, you can pull up all of your weather at any time and view it. So anyways, I'm gonna go get to setting this all up and then through the magic of video editing, I will be coming back and showing you guys the full setup and going over a full review. So talk amongst yourselves. I'll all right, right guys, back. so here we go, taking a look at the ambient weather WS2000 here. And it's a little bit breezy. You guys can see this thing's moving around just a little bit. You can see the direction the wind's out of. Here is the rain gauge and the sensors under that UV shield right there. You do wanna make sure that everything is level. It's pretty level here. There's a solar array and I've just got mine mounted on this nice little stand here temporarily for this video. But of course, I'll probably be moving this afterwards to a more permanent location. But this is just a quick look at the WS2000. Now back to right, the studio. Guys, so we are back inside now. Let's talk about this display. So this comes with your WS2000, and I believe the same display comes with the WS5000 if you were so inclined. It's super high res and actually blows all the competition out of the water that I've seen. This one looks really good. Now I don't know if it's gonna come through on camera properly just because there's so many studio lights in here. In post-processing, I'll try to make it as close to real life as I can. You can see a little bit of branding up there, and then you got a bunch of buttons down here, and that is how you control this. This is not a touch screen. It's all controlled through these buttons. But first, let's talk about the display here. So you can see up in the top, you got the ambient weather logo with a strong signal, and that is the connection to the Wi-Fi and to the uh, ambient weather because this constantly uploads that data to your account. Then you've got the logo next to it, which is uh, some more bars, but those ones are gray. That is for the connection to the station that is outside. So if that goes too low, you might want to reposition this a little bit and get some better reception. But I'm literally in a studio and it's pretty far away and it's still got really, really strong signal. Then up here at the top, you've got your date and time and that is constantly uh, internet synced up, so it's always correct. Then here you've got your outdoor temperature, your high, your low, your current temperature, as well as the wind direction and wind speed, as well as the gusts right under it, as you can see right there. And honestly, this is what you're gonna be looking at the most. And then right under it, you've got your feels like temperature, dew point, humidity. And if that dew point goes above 70%, you will see a little lightning bolt, which just means that uh, lightning is conducive at that uh, dew point and higher. And you've got your 10 minute average for your winds, in case you're curious, and your maximum daily gust right there. And just below this, you've got your sunrise and your sunset based on your location that you set. You do have to put in your coordinates uh, for some reason, I thought it was going to pull my location straight from the Ambient Weather app, which it did have location access to, but that was not the case. I had to manually uh, put in my coordinates, but it's really not a big deal. It's a one-time thing. Within the same graphic here, you can see you've got your moon phase right there, as well as the sun. So that means it is just coming up now because it's only 10.34 a.m. It is not at its highest point in the sky. You can see the UV index right there, and I believe that stands for watts per meter squared of sunlight. 213 right there, not very much, but you wouldn't expect very much at this time in the morning. Now let's move over here to this indoor section. So this is really cool. This station comes with its own indoor temperature, humidity, and pressure sensor right here. And it constantly cycles through the temperature, the humidity, and the pressure. I've been looking for a way to change that uh, pressure to HPA right here, but I haven't been able to figure that out just yet. There's supposed to be some switches on the back here, but uh, they appear to be covered up or not accessible. So if I figure that out, I will drop a comment down below. But for now, it's not a big deal. This thing is super accurate and it displays right here 
uh, on the screen. So you can put this anywhere in your house to monitor uh, your temperature. Not only that, obviously you can use this standalone to see what the temperature is and the humidity and everything like that. You could put it in a humidor, you could put it in your bedroom, in your garage, anywhere you need to check the temperature. Then right next to it here, you can see this lightning bolt that says one day ago, 15 miles away. I actually purchased separately with my own money, the lightning detector, uh, because hey, I figured that would kind of fill out the screen a little bit, look a little better on camera. It's about 66 bucks right now uh, on Amazon and that is what you get. So what it does is it can detect lightning strikes from up to 25 miles away. And I've just got mine, you know, sitting under my deck here and it was doing really well. And it's not in an ideal location, but the other day we had a lightning storm. I'll show you in the app. I've got a lot to show you guys in the app, which we will get to in a minute. I wanna be very thorough here because this weather station has a lot to feature, a lot more than the competitors that I have seen. So I wanna go over everything. But anyways, this lightning detector, it was picking up like 130 lightning strikes per day because we had just a ton come through. Yeah, it is awesome. I highly recommend getting that. Uh, if you do purchase this, you don't have to buy it all at once. You can buy it later, you know, save up some money, 66 bucks, not a big deal. And then you will have your lightning detector, which really rounds this thing out. There are more add-ons that you can get as well, like particle detectors for the air quality and stuff like that. I do not have any of those yet, but I'm thinking in the future I will, and maybe I'll update this video and maybe make another one. So here is the rain gauge. So this part is super useful, especially if you have a lot of plants and you do a lot of gardening, you wanna know how much rain you've gotten. The WS2000 seems incredibly accurate as far as rain meters go. So right here, you've got your daily rain, in inches and this little icon fills up you've got your rate which is inches per hour you've also got per event so per rain event then you've got hourly weekly monthly and yearly so obviously for the year i have not only had 0.95 inches this is just since i set it up because i've had this set up for about a week to gather enough data so i could present this review for you guys that is the rain gauge then down here you have your barometer readings which i like to have mine set to relative and in hpa so 1023.4 that is pretty accurate uh, i also have my garmin Fe Oh, I was going to say I have my Garmin Phoenix watch on, but I'm not wearing that one today. But that one also tells me the pressure and it's been pretty spot on. All you have to do is really calibrate it with your local airport and you're good to go. Right there, you can see uh, what the change has been. So right now it's on the uptrend and there is the predicted weather. So things mostly sunny or partly cloudy right there uh, just because it's on the uptrend. Just an estimate, but that's what it's got. So then right here, you can change the brightness up or down. Here, you can turn off or on the screen. I have mine set to turn on at 7.30 a.m. and off at 10 p.m. That way, it's not wasting uh, resources here. It's just going to turn off when no one's looking at it. Right here, you can change from light mode to dark mode. This actually might have been a better choice for camera, to be honest with you, because that comes through much better. But you can see the vibrant colors on this thing. Looks absolutely fantastic. Personally, like dark mode, uh, but I'm going to leave it on light mode here for the video because it really shows the colors more lifelike. Because you can see these color rings do have different gradients of color, which I find really cool. And one other thing I didn't mention, uh, you can see the strength for each of these. So the strength from this to this uh, is very strong and the lightning detector is also strong. So you wanna keep those in check, make sure they are strong. Here you can change your relative or absolute pressure reading right there. Here you can change your channel. So if you have multiple of these in your house, you can cycle through them and it'll show up here uh, and you can just cycle through the different ones. It can cycle on its own. So it's really cool. Then this up and down arrow right here shows you your max and min for indoor temperature, indoor humidity, everything like that, hourly rain, you can go through those. It's pretty much just stats for nerds. They got graphs. So yeah, you can cycle through those if you are so inclined. Me personally, I like to use the app, which I will get to next. Over here, you've got your settings. So here is how I've got mine set up. Um, you are gonna want to input your longitude and latitude, which you can just scroll down to using these buttons right here. And then if you press the settings button again, you go to the next spot, which is the alarm, which you can set calibration right here if you need to, and you're back to the setup panel. So that's just a quick rundown of this device. I think we should kick this over to the application and I'm gonna show you guys even more. So real quickly here, this is the app on the iPhone, but I'm gonna show you it on the iPad. It looks even cooler. Uh, 73 degrees, overcast, high, low, right there. You've got your hourly forecast right here, which is really cool. You can scroll through, you can see the wind, direction, the speed, the predicted UV index. You can also see the percentage of rain that you are expected to get, as well as the inches. It also has the expected pressure, which is cool to be able to see all of this information right at your fingertips at any time. And of course, this is all from your local weather station. And here is the predicted forecast, mostly cloudy throughout the day, rain on Tuesday and Thursday. Then you got your basic stuff, feels like wind, pressure, humidity. And then you've got your weekly forecast right here, where you can go through the entire week and kind of check it out. Wow, it's gonna be pretty hot on Wednesday. Not looking forward to that. Next up, there is a weather map, but I have switched that over to a different location just to keep some privacy here. Uh, but you can see, you can zoom in on other people's weather stations uh, and check out their weather. You can set yours to public or private, depending on what you want. You've got a couple controls over here for the app, 
uh, for the wind gust, temperature, things like that. Yeah, let's move on to the next panel. This one at the top will say your station name as well as the location. But personally, I like to keep this quick view up top. It's got all of the information that you need right at your fingertips, literally everything you need. Your temperature, dew point, wind speed, uh, rainfall right here. You can go through that, the pressure, humidity, indoor. You got all the indoor sensors, so everything from the sky is right here. You got your solar index and then lightning strikes if you have any. So I'm gonna switch over to the iPad because I think it looks way better. Okay, so here is the iPad app. That's what the icon looks like. And this app looks so good on the iPad. I think it's laid out perfectly. It's got a lot of information all at your fingertips. Easy to digest, but it literally gives you everything that you could ask for. So here we've got that same quick view list where you can scroll through all of the information. We've also got the current outside temperature, the dew point. We've also got these handy graphs here, which this would of course update uh, with more info, you know, after you use it for a whole year, this graph will look a little different. Then we've got your wind speed right here, and this is all updated in real time. So you don't have to refresh or anything. You can just leave this up, sit it on your desk and watch it update. Uh, here we've got the rain. So you can see the icons uh, filled up a little bit there for the, for the week, month and year view. But for today, it's not raining. Here we've got the solar radiation. You can see the peak for today and what it's at currently. There must be a cloud out there. Here we've got the indoor temperature, humidity, dew point feels like. You've got your entire weekly forecast right here, easy at your fingertips. You can move these around, put this up to the top if you're so inclined. Here we've got the sun and moon phases, which is awesome. You can see when the sun sets, the moon sets, the moon rises, the sun rises right there. You can see where it's at in its phase. Here we've got the pressure, the humidity, UV index, which is very important to keep an eye on that and see how much sunscreen you need to wear. Lightning strikes right there. And then lastly, we've got this batteries, all batteries okay, which is good to see. This monitors all your batteries across your different devices. Then if you click on devices here, it will show you all your devices and what you feed to. So I only feed to ambient weather right now, but there's also weather underground and there's other options there. I've got to blur this out because it's got a lot of information. This page I'm gonna have to blur out as well, but basically it's got an alert. If my device is not reporting for 20 minutes, it will send me an alert and let me know. But I do want to dive right into these alerts because this is where ambient weather really, really shines. This has so much customization here. It's really unmatched. So let's just click on this parameter here. I know I had to blur some of that out. Um, but you can choose any of these different parameters right here. So <laughs> you see, they just keep going. I can scroll through them. I want to show you every single one of them here. So you can set a specific uh, parameter here. So let's say wind speed. You can choose your condition here. So let's just say if it's greater than, let's keep it at miles per hour. Let's add in, I don't know, if it's greater than 30 miles an hour. And as I have set it up here, uh, it will send me an email if the wind speed is greater than 30 miles an hour. That is incredibly powerful. Uh, you could set this up for all types of different alerts that you want. Maybe if you wanna see what the hourly rain is or the daily rain, or even you know if the UV index is above like six or something, you might wanna know that. This is incredibly useful information that you guys can use and harness by just setting up some alerts and it will let you know you don't have to constantly monitor your station. You can literally just have the station tell you. So between these apps and this awesome display unit, all of the features included here, I think the WS2000 is probably the best bang for buck uh, weather station that you can get. I mean, you could get a cheaper one from a different brand, but it's probably not gonna last as long. It definitely doesn't have as many features as this. I have some colleagues that have uh, competitor brands and always complain that they are breaking and they are looking for something uh, more high quality. And this, I think, fits the bill for pretty much everyone. If you're an enthusiast, you're gonna love the information you get here. If you're a novice and you're new to this and you're just dabbling your feet, this is one that's a great investment because there's so many more features, it's more high quality. None of it feels like it's going to just break on you. And if something did happen to break, you can just buy another one of these for you know 30 bucks or however much they are and move on. But I really do not anticipate any of this breaking. I think this is definitely the start of the show though. I love seeing this thing every morning. I like to be able to just quickly glance at it, see what the temperature is, what the wind is, what I need to wear outside. You know, do I need a jacket? Should I be wearing shorts? And I don't have to trust the weather guy on the TV and hope that he's right because I know that this is right. So this is as local as it can get for your weather. It's really about as good as it gets. So check it out, guys. This is the Ambient Weather WS2000. I highly recommend it. I think I'm going to make more videos on this as I uh, expand my collection, as I buy more of these or more of the particle meters, or they even have a soil meter, which can tell you if the ground is too wet or not wet enough and you need to water. As I slowly purchase those, I think I'm going to make more videos on this. Or if Ambient Weather wants to send them out over the next couple of years, uh, we will see how this holds up. And then here, let's quickly talk about the charts and graphs. So this application application actually has a full featured chart and graph section. This takes data from every single one of your sensors and puts it into a chart or a graph form. So you got it on your phone, but I'm going to show you it on the iPad because it's got a little bit more information, you know, all at once. So right here, I can see the feels like the outdoor temperature and the dew point all at once. There are different colors, but it's hard to see on camera because of the studio lights. There we go. This might be a little bit better to be able to see this. You can monitor everything. You can go through and check the temperature right here. You've also got the wind gust, wind speeds, wind direction. You've got your daily rain, 
hourly rain rate, the relative pressure, as you can see, it's been rising, the outdoor humidity, which you can see dropped this morning. We've also got the solar radiation, the UV index, lightning strikes, which is always cool to see uh, when there is a storm, the indoor temperature from the indoor sensor, the indoor humidity, sun and moon height, right there in the sky. Check these graphs every day to see where we stand. Kind of gives you a good overview of what's been going on inside and outside. You can go ahead and drag your finger to see exactly what was going on at any given time. Incredibly powerful stuff here. So anyways, guys, big thank you and shout out to Ambient Weather for sending this station out free for review. I am super thankful that we were able to get a chance to look at this and to review it for you guys and hopefully help you make an informed decision if you are looking to purchase one yourself. I know this is a big investment, but it should be a good one because in my opinion, this is the most professional and well-built weather station that I've used and it's super accurate. I've compared these numbers to different weather apps and even other weather stations in the area. It's spot on and it's amazing to be able to have this in your own backyard, have your own weather station, check on things yourself, not have to rely on anyone else. So check it out guys, links to it down below. It's super modular, you can get different things. You don't have to buy them all at once, but I think this kit is the way to go. The WS2000, check it out. If you liked the video, hit it with a big thumbs up and subscribe, and I will see you guys in the next one. Peace.